today's lesson is going to be about dandelion puffs. Now, we're going to talk about several different things, and um, one will be composition. That's how you place things on the page. Uh, we're going to talk about how colors mix together, and then we're going to also do a lesson about color resist, crown resist, because we're going to be using materials that hopefully you have access there at home. Uh, all you'll need to do is to gather up a few items I've got here. I've got some regular magic markers like these. It can be uh, whatever brand you want, but what you want is either washable or non-permanent. Uh, you'll see why later. But you will also need at least one black Sharpie marker. Uh, you'll need a pencil and you'll need a white crayon. Um, and uh, everything else, I've got several different things. At the end, we're gonna do a little painting and I'm gonna show you how we can mix those uh, uh, markers and make it a better color. All right, let's get started with today's lesson. Okay, and here I have an actual photo of the way a dandelion looks so that we can get an idea. Uh, notice that there is kind of a circle that goes around to the middle and we're gonna think about that circle here and that's gonna help us in this drawing process. Uh, let's look at another picture. Here's another one. This is one where a lot of them have already disappeared on us. They have already uh, uh, blown away, so you can kind of see there, there's kind of an outside circle that you can see, but there's also an inside circle. Now, another thing that we do when you think about composition is it's better that things aren't right in the center. So we're going to draw about three different dandelions, more on one side or the other. And we're first of all not going to think about the stems but I'm gonna lightly draw, and you can do this with any kind of a pencil. Um, I would suggest to draw lightly, and you just kind of draw an outside circle, because we're gonna erase this later. There's one, they don't all have to be the same size. I think I'll make this one a little smaller. Maybe one down in here. And we'll do some more later. Now, within each uh, one of the circles, I'm gonna draw another smaller circle just inside. And remember, you can pause this video at any time if you want to play a catch-up. You can watch and pause and replay. So now it looks kind of like three little records. Well, that's the inside, so I'm going to think about where I want my stem to be. So I'm going to kind of eye it. I think I'm going to have it turn a little bit to the side. As if they're blowing away. And I'm going to let this one disappear and maybe come back up here. And now I'm gonna start on the very inside, and I'm gonna think about that center, and I'm gonna start drawing things that look like they're going, hands of a clock. So they go from the center to some part of the circle. Looks a little like a wheel, and I'm just gonna draw some around that circle. And then at the end, which it looks like the letter Y. We can make your chicken split. We're just gonna kinda of start branching off. And then we'll eventually do the same thing coming all the way out to the other circle and I might branch it out even more. And I'm going to continue to do this. This is how we make those little dandelions. We're going to bring them out, branch them to two sides. Looks like a letter Y. It's easier to see when I do one straight up so you can see. We're going to branch that off. Okay, now you want to find a permanent marker like a Sharpie and you're going to go over all of your lines except for the outside circles. We're going to leave that alone because in the end we're going to erase a lot. Now when dandelions are at this stage the other thing we want to think about is when you blow those dandelions which I think your parents aren't pretty excited about is it's going to push those seedlings out. So I'm going to think about the wind blowing some across here and I'm going to kind of draw some seedlings. And notice I just have a, like a little loop here. And I can have them go in whichever direction because you know the wind is going to take them. You can add as many of these as you want. And you can have them blowing whatever directions. So I'm just going to have some going at different places and we can add those to our pictures. Now at this point, it's real important that we erase our pencil marks. Now, 
Now, we're, the rest, next process we're gonna do is we're gonna do a crayon resist. So I'm gonna get a white crayon. It can be any kind of crayon. Um, or if you have something around the house, sometimes people have oil, uh, something called a, a pastel that's an oil pastel or an oil crayon. You can use that also. But a, a regular crayon does a great job. It's not gonna look like I'm doing anything, but I am going to color that white crayon and fill this in completely. Because what I want to do is when I start to paint with my marker, I want to leave this part white. So I'm going to do a really nice heavy job of coloring those in everywhere so that if I look at it, I'm going to color in two different directions and I want to make sure I don't have any holes. So you can see I'm going, I want to make sure to go right on the outside of every circle. And I'm even going to do it on the very edge of those dandelion edges. Now when you're coloring with a crayon like this, they sometimes break, but that's okay. You just keep on using them. Now it seems like it's not doing anything. You can kind of see it'll coat that white, that black a little bit, but it's important to get even the paper behind that in between. You should, you'll feel it on there. Okay, back to our original picture. You can see I've got all this painted in here. Well, I painted it with marker. And here's another one. It's got a different color choices and we can kind of see what happens. Well, what the kind of markers that I'm asking you to find around your house are probably just a regular, uh, I've got some Crayola here or whatever. It doesn't matter the brand as long as it's not um, a permanent marker. I went ahead and played around and got some other colors here and I went ahead and blended because I found that some colors mix better than others. And this is where you can go find a brush, it can be a it's kind of a craft brush, it can be any kind of brush that you have. And what I've done is I've colored certain colors together and you may want to experiment a little, little bit. And so I've already got these colored in and I'm going to take some water and I'm going to show you how these colors will kind of blend. And so you might want to do that on another piece of paper so you can kind of see how they're going to blend before you ever get started. And you can see some colors blend nice. And again, you can use any brush you want. I, I had one of these little foam brushes, so if you have one of those, that works, but a regular brush. And I'm just gonna start blending those colors together. It can be a little watercolor brush. And you see how adding just a little bit of water helps them. And as you get close to the edge, you'll see it wants to skip. All right, you can pause this video at any point. Sometimes I've gone very quickly today, but I hope that you have enjoyed this process. I want you to experiment and have fun with it. And I hope that you'll send me some uh, pictures of work that you've done too. Thank you for coming today and, and watching.